Hi everyone, it's getting to the time of the year where it's time for me to start harvesting honey. After last year I had 305 gallons of honey, I decided it was time for me to revisit and try to figure out better and more efficient ways to do my entire uh, honey processing process. I've added this second building and after experiencing the dehumidifier last summer and the positive impact it had on the taste of my honey and the quality of it, I decided to go ahead and invest in a second building. I'll still be extracting out of this building, but now I've got extra storage. This will speed things up for me. And the purpose of this building is gonna be for additional storage. I have shelving in there, but the, par the primary thing is gonna be my drying room. So this will be a combination of a drying slash storage room. Once I have the supers dried after a couple of days, then I'll, I'll move them over to this building where we'll extract. And that'll give us a lot more room in there to deal with. And the reason I went this way is probably been better, more efficient to build a honey house, but the price of materials right now is really expensive. And this building was really expensive too, but I, I decided to go ahead and go with this and experience this for a few years. And this might help me make a better honey house when that, that time does come, if it comes, we may work fine out of this. So I'll just have to try it and see. Well, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and take you inside and I'll show you what I've done in here and then then I'll take you inside and, make, and show you the changes I've made in there. Let's take a look inside and see what we got. So to get the supers in here, I'm going to, uh, I got this folding ramp from Harbor Freight. It's aluminum, really light, so I'll put it at the door. So to make it easier to move these supers around, I purchased 20 of these dollies. And then I've got some of these drip pans. We consistently lose quite a bit of honey every year on the floor, uh, from draining from the supers, whatever. So I found a good deal on these and I got 24 of these and a super fits in these just perfectly. So I'll set the drip pan on top of the cart and then I've cut these pieces of wood here to provide an air gap. And as you can see, the honey super will fit right on there and the, and the super can breathe from underneath. And I'll stack these up seven or eight high and then as I need to move the stack around, it's all on wheels and I'll move it over here close to the door where I can utilize my hive lifter to move them to the other building. And right here's the dehumidifier and I've got a drain going out through the floor where I don't have to worry about emptying the bucket. And I wired in some lights up here. Also in the ceiling I mounted six fans in here and I've got them plugged in right there and I've got them rigged on a switch over here. Right there's my light switch and then there's the fans. This will provide the downdraft. And I have these fans set on low right now. It may get a little noisy, but it does create a lot of wind in here. And I can turn this up on the high setting. And I've got these space heaters in here as well. And so my goal while I have the honey supers in here is to keep it around 90 degrees in here with the humidity down around 30%. So I'm hoping in one to two and a half, maybe three days, I'll have these supers dry down in the below 17%, somewhere between maybe 16 and 17%. And last year I noticed a big difference in the taste and the quality of honey. And right now, as you can see, I've not had this on. It's 70% humidity in here and 88 degrees. Now a couple of days ago, I tested this. And in the afternoon, the sun kind of shines on this part of the building, but I noticed once the humidity come down, the building would heat up pretty efficiently. And I didn't even use the space heaters, but it got to 106 in here with about 32% humidity. And it didn't feel that bad, so. Also, I put some, I went to a salvage place and bought some of this uh, laminate flooring and put it in here. And that's just, it's not for looks, it's just for the purpose of keeping this clean and be easy to mop and keep up versus the plywood that it come with. I've got storage shelves right here down both sides. And uh, those are some tools and stuff, electrical stuff is left over that won't be left in here. And I got shelving over here as well. And I got room, I may put a couple more shelves right there. So this is pretty simple, pretty nice, I think. And uh, we're fixing to find out if this is gonna work. If I can stack them seven or eight high, I should be able to get, you know, with 20 of those, I should be able to easily get 100 supers in here and dry them at one time. And the purpose of this is I could be drying supers while I'm extracting. And I'll come in here and get seven or 
14 at a time and take over to the other building. Also with that higher temperature, it should sling out a lot easier. I'm hoping this right here will be a game changer. I took a two wheel hand truck and uh, kind of made it, put these forks on there, welded it on there to extend it out. And then I took a bunch of these covers I got and screwed some uh, two by fours to it where I can get the forks under it. My plan is to stack, you know, have my ratchet strap under there to start with and I'll stack the supers about five high and I'll put a top on there and ratchet strap it together and get up under it with these forks and then pick it up easily with those forks like that. Without those forks, it wants to tip over that way. So without those forks, I should be able to get up under it easily and then run it up the tailgate of my trailer and then stack it you know, in an orderly fashion. So if this works out pretty smooth, this will be a game changer. That means the most work will be going from, you know, just stacking it from the hive down to the ground. Primarily this year, I'm gonna to try to use the fume boards. That's something I haven't done in probably about 12 years. But all this is an effort to make it easier. If I can make this more efficient, I can hold out to do more. It's just that simple. So something else I'll be doing this year for harvest, in addition to my normal standard hive tool, I got a couple of these bars at Harbor Freight. And these right here make a huge difference. What I run into a lot is frames wanting to stick together. At harvest time, I haven't had these supers off in probably two and a half months. And a lot of times they're really stuck together. And it takes a lot of energy to hold it up and you know break those frames loose one by one. Well, I've done been working with this some, but I find out when you pry this up enough that you can get this in there under between your supers. Uh, with this, the thickness of this and the leverage you have, it's much, much easier to get that super apart. And plus you can shove it on up under there and it makes it a whole lot easier to get off because you didn't let it all the way back down. But a word of caution though, this is kind of heavy. You gotta watch your feet. This, if you leave it hanging out, it'll fall. It can fall on your feet. You can ask me how I know, but it is painful when it hits your feet. Or you can wear steel toe shoes and not worry about it. So here we are in the honey house. This is pretty much cleaned up, ready to go. We're just about to start extracting. This looks dramatically different than last year. Last year I had four storage tanks here, a 240 gallon and 200 gallon tanks. And I had the extractor and the uncapping tank over here. And you can see in the corner where I had it uh, chained or strapped to the corner of that pad over there. So what I was doing was I had three buckets at each station, three buckets at the extractor, one under the uncapping tank, three buckets at each one of the four tanks, and then I'd wind up in a bottling tank. So after calculating it, that's a well over 400 five gallon bucket fulls of honey lifts I've done just inside this building. So I'm trying to eliminate that and make this more efficient and faster. So I'm gonna, for the first time, I'm gonna go to drums and I got a brand new honey pump I've got it rigged up to where it'll, it'll pump in there. We've got a switch and a honey clarifier. And right here's where I plan on stacking the supers. I'll be able to stack them too high and jack this up as I go and I won't have to bend over so much. So I've got this set up. This is totally backwards. And there's two reasons I set it up on the opposite end. This is the highest end of the building. And that part down there is only about a foot off the ground. So I'm anticipating getting seven to eight drums of honey I'm not gonna fill them all the way up, probably about 50 gallons or six inches from the top to where I'll stop on each one. I got 10 in all, but I've got eight in here ready to go. So right here's where I'll uncap, and there'll be one on each side. We'll feed the extractor. The sideline run capper generates a lot of small wax, so to combat that, I made a little box and I got this screen. I'm gonna to try to catch most of that there, and that will hopefully make it a little easier on the clarifier to get the wax out and then as we go from there into the honey pump. I've never used a honey pump before. This is all new to me. And it terminates over here into the tank and each barrel is on a roller dolly so I can move them around very easily. So that's where I plan on storing them once I get them filled up. Another improvements I made in here is I put a lot more plugs, outlets in here. I was always battling having to run extension cords in here. So we put several more and then this gray wire here, I got a dedicated circuit just to run this equipment, the extractor, the clarifier, heating element, and the electric motor will all be run off that one dedicated circuit, which is a 30 amp with 10 gauge wire. And also once we get through extracting, 
that I'll sell up my bottling configuration over here and I'll run off one of them heavy, I call it heavy duty circuit plugs over there. So the bottling tank, it's here ready to go. I just, this is just where I'm storing it for the time being. And I got a couple of uh, squirrel cage fans here that aim at us. Uh, we're on the opposite end, the air condition won't be quite as cool. So uh, that'll help keep us cool while we're working. And to move them from building to building, I got two sets of the aluminum ramps. And those seem to work pretty good. And I'll just use my hive lifter to bring hives over here. I'll probably bring about 14 at a time. And they'll be nice and warm. And we can sling them out and I'll get some more. And hopefully that'll make the slinging process more efficient. Well, there we have it. That's uh, basically how I've got my honey house reconfigured this year. I'm sure there's going to be some learning pains with this and we'll, we'll tweak and make adjustments as needed. But uh, we're going to give it a shot and get started and we'll go from there. Well, I want to thank you for joining me for this video and we'll catch you on the next one.